Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare Question and Answers Question 1. Why did Calpurnia request Caesar not to go to the Senate House? Answer. Calpurnia, Caesar's wife had evil dreams hinting an imminent death of Caesar. She discussed it with an interpreter of dreams and was told to be careful about Caesar's life and therefore requested Caesar to stay home. Question 2. What was the watchman's dream? Answer. The watchman had a dream that pointed to Caesar's death. He saw a lioness giving birth to its cubs in the street while two armies fought on clouds. Blood rained down from the clouds. Graves opened and ghosts came out and ran through the city. Question 3. What was Calpurnia's dream? What did it mean? Answer. Calpurnia saw in her dream a statue of Caesar in the city center. From it rained blood as if water from a fountain. She saw great men of the world washing their hands in that blood, smiling. She feared that someone was keen about killing Caesar and that there was a conspiracy to kill him and that many people would be happy with Caesar's death. Question 4. How did Caesar try to dispel Calpurnia's fears? Answer. Caesar appeared to have taken no serious care of Calpurnia's fears and doubts. He said that her dream had no direct indication to his death. Moreover, he claimed that he was a brave man and that the brave don't fear death at all. Caesar went on explaining that the dream can point to the death of someone else if at all it meant anything. Question 5. What was Decius Brutus' mission? How did he accomplish it? Answer. Decius Brutus was sent by Cassius to bring Julius Caesar out of his house to be murdered. But when Decius reached Caesar's home he was shocked to hear that Caesar was not going to come due to a dream Calpurnia had. The very smart Decius made Caesar narrate the dream and exclaimed that the dream had been misinterpreted. Then Decius interpreted the same dream in his most crafty way and presented it as a good omen to Caesar. He said the lost glory and life of Rome could be restored only by Caesar. Decius went another degree ahead and lowered Caesar's desire to be crowned as the emperor of Rome saying someone else would be crowned as emperor if Caesar didn't go to the Senate House. Question 6. Discuss the blunders committed by Marcus Brutus? Answer. Among all his blunders, the biggest one committed by the simpleton Brutus is that he believed Cassius. Following that he indulged in a series of foolish and thoughtless acts. Giving Antony permission to speak at Caesar's funeral against Cassius' opposition was the first. He was overconfident that Antony would not stir the minds of the mob better than him. As with the vile Cassius, Brutus blindly believed Antony too. Again, Brutus left the marketplace leaving Antony to speak. Moreover Brutus believed that Caesar was an ambitious man. Question 7. Why did Cassius want Brutus stand with him to assassinate Caesar? Answer. Cassius grew jealous of Caesar's mounting popularity and the possibility of becoming the new emperor of Rome. He wanted to assassinate Caesar for his good more than for Rome's. But he was very much sure of the consequence of killing Caesar who is the beloved of the whole of Rome especially of Brutus. So Cassius targeted to Brutus and wanted him to join the conspiracy for two reasons, one to use him as the sharpest weapon to assassinate Caesar and the other to easily convince the mob. Cassius was right in his planning. When Caesar was first attacked by Casca, Caesar drew out his sword to fight back the conspirators but soon went weak at the sight of his beloved Brutus drawing his sword to stab him. Brutus, with the help of his great popularity and name rather than his oratory skills, convinced the mob when it demanded an explanation for killing Caesar. Thus, Cassius used Brutus as a shield and played the master conspirator. Question 8. How did Brutus convince the Roman mob of the importance of assassinating Caesar? Answer. Brutus had great confidence in his oratorical powers. 
He was very emotional at the time of his speech explaining why Caesar had to be killed for Rome. His was a short speech with questions whose answers were very simple. Brutus said that his love for Caesar was always the same but killed him because his love for Rome and Romans was greater than that. He told them that Caesar was very ambitious and it was very necessary to kill Caesar to provide a free existence for all Romans. Brutus also reminded that what he did to Caesar was what every Roman was supposed to do to him if he had behaved like Caesar. Brutus talked to the fragile sentiments of the fickle-minded Romans and achieved a temporary victory over their minds. Question 9. Antony's speech has stood out ever since it was made and will stand out forever. Why is Mark Antony's speech so extraordinary? Answer. Antony's speech stands a masterpiece of oratory. He was a magician who played tricks with words. He stirred the minds of thousands of Romans with measured use of highly flammable words and expressions. He made a war against the most dangerous enemies with an army of fickle-minded people. Antony had no firm stand to make his speech nor was he half as important as Brutus was. He had to speak to the crowd after it was spoken to by Brutus. He was not allowed to blame any conspirator. Yet Antony dropped a rain of shell on the conscience of the Romans and won their support and stirred their minds against the conspirators. Antony's success was the success of his speech. He began a speech in such a manner that his hearers and his enemies thought that he too was with Brutus and Cassius. But the Antonian style was different. He was a good actor, a good psychologist and the greatest orator. He confused the people with credible facts. He made them feel guilty by reminding how great Caesar was and how much they used to love them. He made them cry showing the wounded mantle that Caesar had worn when he was stabbed. He made them mourn for Caesar by revealing the content of the will Caesar had made for them. He fumed their minds with revenge against the conspirators who had killed their great Caesar who had given them money and land. While doing all this, Antony kept on praising. Question 10. Comment on Antony's ironical praising of the conspirators. Or why did Antony repeatedly call the conspirators honorable people in the speech? Answer. Antony's speech was all set to stir and instigate unsteady minds of the Roman public who had believed that it was good that Caesar died. Revenge in his mind, Antony stood to speak good about Caesar but he was not allowed to blame the conspirators in any case. So, to blame the conspirators and to bring out their evil conspiracy, Antony praised Caesar on one side and disqualified his glories because the honorable Cassius and Brutus had told Caesar was ambitious. This ironical presentation slowly confused the mob and the public began to doubt if Brutus' claims were right or if Caesar were really ambitious. This doubt gradually gave way to their realization that Caesar was a great man and the Brutus and Cassius committed unforgivable crimes to Caesar and the Romans. Question 11. Do you think Antony did for Caesar as much as what a good friend does? Or Antony's speech was a tribute to his friendship with Caesar. Explain. Answer. Both Antony and Brutus were Caesar's true friends. But somewhere on the way Brutus committed his greatest crime by believing the envious Cassius that Caesar was ambitious and that he had to be assassinated for the good of Rome. But Antony was a loyal friend of Caesar and he proved that by avenging Caesar's death through his instigating speech even though it was quite risky for his life. Question 12. Why did Antony refuse to read the will? Answer. In fact Antony wanted the mob to make him read the will rather than he did it himself. He intensified their interest and curiosity in the will yet pretended to be unwilling to read it. Even though Antony didn't read the will he gave the mob an indirect and regarding the content of the will that contained benefits for all Romans. He wanted them feel guilty of supporting the conspirators for killing Caesar who had made a will so good for them. Question 13. 
which qualities in Julius Caesar do you find in him fit for a good ruler? Answer. Was not ambitious, declined the crown, had sympathy for the poor, filled the public treasury, made a great will, was concerned about subjects. How did Antony play his safe manipulation tricks during his speech? Six marks he used words and expressions with great care, blamed them, criticized them and yet pretended that he didn't want any harm befall the conspirators, told the mob of the will but said that he should not read it for fear of the mob fury against the conspirators, asked the mob to stand around the dead body of Caesar, he was creating a safe ring for himself, while the mob burnt with revenge for the murderers of Caesar, he advised them not to revolt. If you like the video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you.